As you can see here, my fruit basket with all the different single board computers consisting of raspberry, banana and orange pies is slowly overflowing. On top of this collection rise the three flagships or most powerful SPCs of each kind. The Raspberry Pi 2, the Banana Pi Mark 2 and the Orange Pi... Wait... Damn it, get your packaging right. The Orange Pi 2. And in this video I will do the ultimate comparison and determine a winner for this battle of processing power. Let's get started. First off, the board quality itself. While the previous Orange Pi had some problems with that, the new Orange 2 and the other two boards look very nice and clean. There are of course the usual connectors like HDMI, 4 or even 5 USB ports if you want to count USB on the go, audio and AV outputs, 40 GPIO pins, camera connector and LCD connector, which the new Orange Pi 2 does not offer anymore, it's a shame. And even though my LeMaker 5 inch LCD has the same pin configuration as the LCD connector of the Banana 2, the driver does not support it. I guess they do not offer third party support and want to promote their own products. Lastly, we have the power input as a micro USB port for the Raspberry and this DC jack for the other two. We could also use the USB on the go port for the power inputs, but then not all USB ports work because the ICs are not powered properly. There also exists a power button for the banana and orange which is connected to a power management IC which also allows the banana to be powered by lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries and yes it can charge them as well. Those two outsiders also throw in some neat extras like an infrared receiver, a small microphone and Wi-Fi which works flawlessly with Raspbian and the Android OS out of the box. The heart of the boards is their system on a chip which uses a CPU with a clock speed of 4x900 MHz, 1 GHz and 1.6 GHz. So the Orange Pi 2 should offer the most processing power, right? In order to test this a bit further, I firstly set up my professional test equipment, installed Raspbian on all the microSD cards of the boards and installed the Suspench application once the operation system was booted. The CPU benchmark creates a defined constant load for 1, 2, 3 or the 4 cores. I wrote down the total time it took each CPU to complete the task and created a bar graph with the results. Since lower is better, it seems like the H3 of the Orange Pi 2 dominated the fields, but the A31S of the Banana is the winner with a 4 core load. Moving on to the RAM. While the Raspberry uses 1GB of LPDDR2, the other two use 1GB of DDR3 which is clearly noticeable with the faster write and read speeds they offer. To compare the GPU capabilities, I installed Android and used the n 2 benchmark to find out that the Banana has a slight advantage against the Orange. The Broadcom 4 GPU of the Raspberry on the other hand didn't need such a live test. There are plenty of sources which claim that it is the weakest. And if you want to use such boards as servers, then the Banana would be the obvious choice because it uses a gigabit Ethernet port, while the other two don't have one. To prove this, I used WinSCP to copy a 92 megabyte file from my PC to the boards and the results turned out just as expected. I also tried to play back 4K footage, which the Orange 2 had no problems with but the banana stuttered quite a bit. If we break down the hardware aspect, then I can say that the orange offers the best for a price of only 30 US dollars. The banana hardware is still great for a price of 50 dollars and the raspberry is just an okay for the price of 42 dollars. But it is not all about the hardware. The Raspberry offers a great Linux based software which I think is great for electronics projects especially because of the wiring pi library. 
After installing it, I can use the GPIOs of the board in a similar way like an Arduino. The Banana developers ported this library quite well and it functions without any problems. But the orange actually just pretends to have it installed while no commands work at all. They just stole the software from the Limaker Banana BananaPy team and they did not a decent job of hiding it. All in all, the orange Raspbian is very glitchy and the Android image they offer comes in Chinese and without a Play Store. In conclusion, they should probably hire more than one guy to develop the software. On the other hand, the Banana developer did a decent job with their software offer and the Raspberry is the clear winner in this category. Lastly, let's compare the community. I think everybody who is interested in such boards knows that there is a huge community around the Raspberry Pi with plenty of information about how to get started, tutorials, projects and many more. The orange and banana community is obviously not that huge, but there has been a lot of gain since the last time I had a closer look at it half a year ago. So of course the raspberry wins this category with ease, while the other two are just okay. These were my opinions. What board you would like to get basically depends on what you want to do with it. You can find all the links to the boards in the description below and if you use those you support my channel, which would be awesome. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, check out my Patreon campaign, stay creative and I will see you next time.